Hey everybody, what's up? Kylan Corn here with you. What up? For another uh, fun and entertaining, hopefully Sunday podcast here. So, first and foremost, Core, let's talk about Greg Anthony. Ooh. For everybody uh, who doesn't know the story, I don't know how many people know it. It was big news like, what, two days ago now it happened? I think it was yesterday. Oh, was it yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Okay. I saw the article yesterday, but I thought for whatever reason it might have been the day before that it happened. I mean, he, yeah, he probably did it the day before, but yeah. it was yesterday the article came out. And this is a soft subject for us. So, Greg Anthony. Because he's a Knicks point guard. Right. <laughs> and he's now he's uh, he, yeah. he was a sports commentator, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And it, he was caught, I think it was in Washington, D.C., mm-hmm. Uh, soliciting a prostitute. Yeah. And by the way, when I read the full article, and it was worded weirdly to make it seem like he, they're not really sure he was doing that. He was just in an area where that happens. Oh, really? Well, they said he was like, I think, less than two miles away from the White House, too, or something like that, which, I mean, <laughs> just the irony in he that. He saw Joe Biden there, too. Yeah, Biden yeah. Like, oh, I need to get my dick <laughs> So... It, the to, the article I read, which was on Huffington Post, was a little bit weird. They seemed to, they made it seem like he was soliciting, but the evidence isn't strong, and they didn't like catch him in the act. He was just in the area where that's what you do. You know what I mean? Yeah, I read an article too that was is like it was very bland. It seemed like they just didn't have any info on it, but were just quick to just be like, "Let's get an article out. We got him. We got him. We got him." Write every article, you know, but like had nothing behind it, no like substance in the article. Yeah, and here's the thing. I I got legit like heated over the article that I read. What was your your what was your first reaction to the article? Because I, I first of all, I was like, oh reaction. he he oh he was like getting prostitutes. Mm-hmm. Wow. But then like four lines in, I got super pissed off because mm-hmm. they said he's indefinitely suspended from his job. Yeah. Uh, well, like I, yeah. Okay. Think about how fucking crazy that is. Like, here's a guy. Is he married? He is married okay, so that's, with four kids or something. So that like would be that. that's the worst part of it. The mm-hmm. worst part of it is that he cheated, mm-hmm. right? That is there was an affair and he certainly owes an apology to his wife. And but that's his own personal business. That's yeah. none of my goddamn business. Mm-hmm. But the idea that a guy loses his job because he got horny and he wanted to bust a nut. Like that's basically what this comes down to. Well, yeah. So my initial reaction to this thing was was one. Like, just strange, because Greg Anthony, a good-looking dude, you know, played in the NBA, and now has a really good job. Like, the fact that he had to solicit prostitutes, or we don't know what happened, was like, okay, that's weird. Like, why? why? And then, two, I was like, automatically, like, boom, he's in, a, he's in a loser's job. But then I saw indefinitely suspended, which thought, you know, okay, they gave him the benefit of the doubt a little bit and didn't fire him right away. So CBS worked with him a little bit, just suspended, which means maybe they'll let it blow over. Uh, they're saying he's going to get maybe like, he could face 90 or 180 days in jail. That's what like the, the, the I guess what the law something? is. They're laying out what the law is in that case, but I don't know if they'll actually prosecute. They have prosecutorial discretion. The, uh, you know, the, the yeah, pe- they decide yeah. what he wants. But then I did background on Greg Anthony. <clears throat> he went to college at UNLV uh-huh. in Las Vegas where prostitution is legal. Right. Yeah. So like, was it back then though? I, I don't oh, know. I don't know. I don't no, know. How, maybe uh, it might be. Who knows? Mm-hmm. So, you know, he could have been doing this for a while in Las Vegas where it's legal. And then, I mean, he obviously knows the laws. He's a smart guy that you can't yeah. do it in Maryland. But regardless of if he can or can't do it, it brings up a whole other discussion of like what he was doing is not even really that bad. Like, first of all, it shouldn't be illegal. Something, yeah. Let's establish that. First of all, it shouldn't be illegal. Yeah. In fact, if you legalize prostitution, what happens is everybody gets paid better. Mm-hmm. There's better health benefits and it's a nonviolent mm-hmm. environment. Because it's illegal, it's so violent because you have like criminal pimps who control the women and exactly. like smack them and That's, do all yeah. this crazy shit. But if you legalize it, what happens? Then you allow it, you bring women it into the light. <laughs> you bring it into the light and you could regulate it and you can tax it and you can make sure that there are standards involved with how you run the business. So first of all, it sh- it just it shouldn't be illegal. But second of all, the fact that he he very possibly lost his career. Yeah. Because of some shit in his personal life. I mean, that seems fucking crazy to me. Yeah. Uh, Like, it's so hard because there's been so many other cases with this. Like, I looked up right away. Marv Albert was the first thing that came to my head. What Didn't he, he like, dressed up like a woman? He was in a hotel, like, and he called up a girl and said he needed to fax something. So she comes to the hotel room. He's dressed in white lingerie and, like, 
like uh he doesn't rape her or something but he like like assaults her or something and forces her to like so like, wait so this woman like, had no her. idea what was going to happen and no, he, she, she showed up and he was wearing something. like a nightie or some shit yeah he was wearing like women's lingerie what the and fuck and this happened multiple times with him where he like had bit women in hotel rooms or something like that and now he's one of it now like if you ask a kid it's like oh marv albert's calling the game he's one of the best commentators so I mean, there is there is some. Oh, like, that, so you're saying there's this massive hypocrisy too? Where yeah, did was he now was he brought up on charges and was he found innocent or not guilty? I don't know I what mean? the charges were, um, but th- it was like I think it was 1997. There was a huge case around it. Like I remember mm-hmm. even growing up, like no, I re- yeah, I remember case. that. I remember hearing about it yeah. too. Um, I think he got charged with something because um, it happened multiple. But then times. he had to get off, right? Because yeah, he, he must have gotten off, or I don't think you he don't did know any the time details. For okay. it. Yeah. But, but but yeah, now he's back on TV he's and back everybody TV, acts so like it's whatever. Like it's whatever. So you think maybe with time they'll let him, uh, Greg Anthony back on TV? Yeah, no? I think so. I mean, he's very, very good at what he does. But I mean, what, I know the laws suck, but what is CBS supposed to do? You know, like I guess it's a, like an indefinite mm. suspension is the best thing they can do. You no, know? you know what it is? I think that as a network, they have this belief where, like, you have to buy into the standards and the morals of society and mm-hmm. what would mainstream America think of this situation and blah, 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 blah. But I think that uh, they think the country is much more puritanical than it is. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that the morality that they think people uh, have is not what they actually have and not what they actually believe. You know what this reminds me of? It's a lot like the the Michael Phelps situation. Remember Michael Phelps after he won roughly 19.3 billion gold medals? Yeah. He was caught smoking weed. Yeah. And then what happened? He had to come out and give a groveling apology. And yeah. I'm so sorry, my sponsors. Please don't leave it me. I understand. Again. It won't happen again. Weed is so evil. I'm the worst person ever. I'm basically like Adolf <laughs> Hitler, blah, 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 blah. And like I was sitting there watching the whole thing. I'm like, no, no, no. None of you guys get it. None of you guys get it. You know what the American people would respect? If you just say, look, it's not really none of your business, and it's really not that big a deal. Yeah. If anybody deserves to smoke a joint, it's the guy who won all these goddamn gold medals. Seriously. Please. And would anybody say anything if I was drinking a Corona at a bar? No. So why are you flipping out over weed? So all it's going to take is one person to be the person that stands up or the network that stands up, and they say, you know what? Enough with your horse shit to people okay it's whatever Mm -hmm. this guy he went to a prostitute it's something that really shouldn't be illegal anyway i don't expect them to say that but i do i do expect somebody to stand up and finally say fuck off Mm -hmm. another example this is like bill maher uh bill maher in 2001 with his show politically incorrect Mm -hmm. like two or three weeks after 9 11 he made a comment that oh everybody goes flipped out about and they're like how dare you say that and then all the advertisers pulled from his show and they ran away he said uh, the the terrorists on 9-11, they're evil, they're barbaric, they're terrible human beings, they're immoral, all these negative things you can associate with them. Mm-hmm. But they're not cowards. Because you need to have fucking balls to fly a plane into a building to carry out your mission. True story. Right? Yeah. But everybody misconstrued that as if he's, like, supporting the terrorists. So everybody's like, oh, we must fire him, fire him, fire him, fire him. So what happened? The ratings for his show went up. Mm-hmm. Well, but the d- advertisers pulled out, so they ca- ended up having to cancel his show. Well, he doubled down and defended what he said, right? He, well, he, uh, yes and no. Like he didn't really back away from it, but he didn't. But he, you know, tr- 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 tried to clarify. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't really a double down. But either way, they they kind of canceled him because of it. Mm-hmm. So my point is, if you're if you do something that's really not bad, or if you say something that's really not wrong, but everybody thinks it's wrong or bad. Stand up and make your point. Yeah. And then you have a much better chance at people going, you know what? Let, let's rethink this. I'm not sure this is, okay, so he smoked a joint. Is that really that much worse than drinking a beer? Is Are the laws hypocritical in America? I think so. Oh, it's a guy who wanted to pay to get a blowjob. Mm-hmm. Is that is that really all that terrible? All guys <laughs> like blowjobs, right? <laughs> and who's, who's going who's gonna to punish CBS? You know, like, regardless of if you don't like them or not like they're so powerful yeah. like what's gonna happen people are gonna stop watching Pe- i like, cannot believe greg anthony's <laughs> commentating on the game right I now can't watch I'm, mike and molly now yes. you know like so never gonna happen the never guy gets happen. out of bail just i agree too i guess is like cbs just say all right you paid your bail you're still gonna call t- today's game you're you know you're on the game right. you're gonna call it and let the guy call the game you know like 
I don't know. There's no, no one's going to punish CBS, you know, because it's like they're too big of a corporation for any, for like tons of people to stop watching them. That's right. And it's just, I, I look, I, you know what I just can't stand, man? I can't stand this like casual acceptance of a puritanical mindset when we all know, and nobody is nobody in their real life, in their personal life, is actually a Puritan. Because mm-hmm. Puritan means, you know, you do no substances, you don't have sex except to fucking procreate. Yeah. And it's all these, like, rigid, Victorian, super religious, fundamentalist ideas. And in society, it's like there's this casual veil put over all of society where in ca- in, in, in co- when you're in company with other people... There's certain things, oh, no, no, we never admit that we ever have sex. We never admit that no. we ever do substances. None of us have ever farted in our lives. No, everything like, contradicts itself. Exactly. When behind closed doors, everybody knows that all these things are the most human things you can ever do. Yeah. And it's things that we all engage in. And then when something like this happens, to have that uh, Puritan side win out, where like it just, it just everybody accepts that like, boom, all right, now Greg Anthony has the scarlet letter on him and he needs to be dismissed from society and... It's like, oh, what's that guy's name? I think his name is Hugh Grant, the actor yeah. who was caught with like a pro- prostitute. Yeah. And where's he been since? Oh, we can, nope, we can't have him nearby because he was with... Like, enough, enough, enough. There are things... You know what real morality is? I talk about this all the time on the show. People are probably tired of me making this point, but real morality is like, okay, war. Well, let's stop war. There's real morality. Yeah. You want to stand up for morality? Try to stop wars. Yeah. You want to stand up for morality? Try to feed the hungry. Try to... Uh, Put a roof over the head of the homeless. Try to uh, stop poverty and end income inequality and prevent disease. Yeah. Like these are things that are really moral, but people conflate that with don't do drugs, pray to Jesus, don't have sex. Yeah, they find stories like this to take their minds off of other bigger stories. So it's like, and we've become such and they a care society, more about these they stories. They care more about yeah. these stories because it's like, oh, he's a celebrity, who, like. And and everybody just fucking piles on these That's people right. and piles on these people because it's like the cool thing to do. And because it's, it's like, easier to understand than the other stories where exactly. people don't want to read the fucking details yeah. of it. Like we covered the story on Friday. That's so true. With Syria, how uh, the U.S. is now taking 400 troops and training the Syrian opposition to fight uh, in Syria. Uh-huh. Now, the only problem with that is when you read into the details, you find out very quickly that the so-called moderate Syrians that we're training... They're Sunnis. ISIS, they're Sunni. Mm-hmm. They kind of have a natural alliance to topple Assad, the Shiite leader in Syria. So we're we're essentially training people and we're giving them weapons to fight ISIS. But that's not their number one enemy. Their number one enemy is the, the government in Syria, the Assad regime, the Shiite leader of Syria, who they view as a dictator. Mm-hmm. So we're training people to fight ISIS, who that's not their first concern. So it's like... Are we? We're giving people more money and more guns now, and they, those guns might eventually be used against us. Yeah. That's a way bigger story than what Greg Anthony did with his dick. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. People just find. That's why. Yeah. On newspapers, headlines are just like Hillary Duff or Michael Jackson. That's right. You don't get fucking news anymore anywhere because what was that? There was something on. It was CNN or something. Some. Ah, oh, fuck. I'm terrible with these political shit, but some lady was giving a speech somewhere, but and Justin Bieber had been oh, flying that's in right, for yeah. Like his they were talking hearing about or some shit. They were talking about one of the most serious issues of our time, which is <laughs> NSA spying and how we have no more p- privacy, right? They cut her and off. they're talking to a congresswoman, and then I think it was Andrea Mitchell who was hosting the show. She oh. cuts her off, or it might have been Luke Russert. It was somebody who cut her off and went to uh, breaking news: Justin Bieber has been arrested. He he'd been no, I think he was just like landing at the airport for his hearing or some something so ridiculous. Oh, I thought it was when he was it's arrested, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if they was, did it multiple times. Yeah, that it was so hilarious. I was watching this clip and they just cut to Justin Bieber, and I was like, "This is what we've come to: is people care more That's about right. those stupid entertainment stories because it gets their mind off of spying and fighting." And, and wars. that's where we come in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where no, new media. That's where, that's where no, new that's media where you comes come in. in. You do a good job. No, new that, media so. in general, yeah. where. Our job, or what we're trying to do, is make the issues that actually matter interesting and cool. Because mm-hmm. I think these are co- like to not. Did you know the word idiot is derived from a word which used to mean to not be involved in politics and like your everyday affairs, mm-hmm. your governmental affairs, public life? Mm-hmm. People, first of all, have no clue about that today. And they think that like these things are so far removed from them that they have no effect on it and that they can't change it. The bigger, big, like, like the bigger issue problems. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. the, the actual political yeah, issues. Yeah, yeah. 
So they, like, embrace the fact that they're idiots. They embrace the fact that, like, I don't know anything about this. I don't want to know anything about this. It's too far removed from me. I can't change it. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like they're... It, it's... Uh, what's the old saying? Ignorance is bliss. It's like they have embraced this idea that ignorance is bliss, mm -hmm. but then when their fucking student loan debt piles up and when they're about to go bankrupt because they have health care bills they can't afford for their kid... In the military or, or some right. shit. You know? And any of these issues, they're like, fuck, where do we go oh, wrong? Like, we need to... What happened here? We need to reevaluate what's going on. How does the system function? What's like these are the important issues. We should care about them from day one because they affect us all. I mean, the fucking the great book, The New Jim Crow, that talks about how the drug war is basically Jim Crow 2.0. Like we had discrimination against black people officially in this country for the overwhelming majority of our history, right? Until mm -hmm. fucking the early 1960s, mid 1960s. And then when that ended and we had uh, you know, equality under the law, they just change the tactic to have the same kind of second-class citizenship in place for black people, where they made them a permanent un underclass and made them all uh, criminals and put them all in prison because, A, you smoked weed. You criminalize all the drugs, right? And then any black person who's caught with those drugs, you put them in jail. And then what happens now? If you look at the statistics, the U.S. has more people in jail than any other nation on earth by far yeah because we've just taken young black kids and minorities and said we're going to put you in jail and this is the new form of segregation the new form of jim crow where you're not going to have any rights then when you get out of prison you're going to go right back into prison because you can't get a job there's nothing you could do you, you have to have turn to selling weed again yeah. like these are such serious issues yeah and this is where the real story is where the real conversations are to be had not fucking greg anthony yeah uh, trying to bust a nut real quick or fucking kardashians or any of that shit that's right and and nobody's ever no one's willing to give a second chance anymore either you know it's automatically like you did something i'm, I'm air quoting something you did something wrong you know like with ray rice or something like that domestic violence like yeah it's terrible I, but everybody just piles and piles so and piles. what happened with him is he gonna come uh, yeah he's, he's he was allowed to come back uh -huh. but he hasn't come back yet yeah no team picked him up at the end of that uh are they going to pick him up next year, you think? I think someone will give him a ch uh, Teams will give him a chance to, you know, at least try out. But everybody's, you know, shying away from him because they're scared yeah. of, you know, just w the repercussions that will come with it. And by the way, we probably should make predictions because you remember our predictions about the Knicks at the beginning of the year? Hey, what did we say? <laughs> Championship or something? You, like, you were like, they'll get, make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, yeah. I think. And I said, nah, nah, nah. Come on, man. Be serious. We're Knicks There'll fans. be two games over 500. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. I would give one of my nuts for to be two games above 500 right now. That oh. would be playoffs, right? In the East? Wouldn't two games above 500 oh, be in yeah, the playoffs? That, that by far, be, right? By far. Be like the four seed? But, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's sad That's about Greg Anthony because there, I'm sure there's tons of other, like, this guy. Who's the guy who does the golf shit? Vern Lundquist or some shit? That old yeah, that's one of the guys. Egg. Mm-hmm. He's probably getting prostitutes <laughs> also, you know? And he was just like, oh, thought, I've got to stop doing it now. I thought you were going to give me a real story. Like, Vern no. Lumquist, uh, you know, it was in the news no, five no, weeks no, ago. No real stories for Vern Lumquist. But, <laughs> no, like, no, but he definitely is. That guy's got to be yeah, oh, 100%. Percent. That guy's, getting, that guy's having who? all types of creepy sex all over the place. And for uh, people who don't know what I'm talking about or what we're talking about, go to Google, type in Vern Lumquist. Yeah. And you'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah. And, that dude's like, having all types of weird. I don't know the backgrounds of the story, but like Jim Nance. He's been caught cheating on his wife. Like, there's stories of him. Like, he's been caught cheating on his wife and, yeah. like, sleeping with, like, young women. Like, I didn't even know that about Jim Nance, yeah, but I'm not surprised. It, yeah. And, um, dude, look, you know what this is? He's got, like, tons of child support shit. Like, you know what the thing is, man? Come on. Let's, let's face it. Caught, like, and it's like, when, it, when men get power, when men get power, what do they do? They almost always, always, always fall into the trap of like, I'm just going to have sex with everything in sight. Yeah. Because there's, I forget who, who said who said this quote, but men are only as loyal as their options. So like, if there's an option, if a woman presents herself, she's like, I'll have sex with you. Men's like, well, I don't have a choice then. I guess, yeah. <laughs> like, I guess yeah. I have to do it. It's true. It just, it happens so much. There's so, there are very, very few like super powerful men mm -hmm. who really have like influence and have, you know. Uh, like have Barack options. Obama or something. He I might mean, like, be one of the few that's not doing it, but we I really know. don't know. Yeah, no, we, we, we don't you know. know what I mean? But I mean, a guy of he's got Look the at utmost power. Yeah, I know. Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton, like Monica Lewinsky, was just like right outside his office, and he's. Yeah. The, the story goes that he he was so busy with work and everything, and he was talking to congressmen on the phone and shit, and he was he just looked right. out the, his door in the Oval Office. He's like, uh, uh, you, uh. <laughs> you come here. You want you want to suck my dick. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. A guy like 
um, Obama, if he's not doing anything, which we don't think he is, like he has a wife and he's got millions of women who look to him and he's just like, he's got power. He's good looking. We cannot understand the amount of power that a person like President Obama has. We cannot understand the amount of power that Justin Bieber has. Yeah. The amount of power that Justin Bieber has over people, never mind young girls, oh, yeah. they, they look at him like he's he's a god. Yeah. You know? Which is so It's so unnatural. He could do so many thi- like, things good. He could do so much I know. good with that. I say that all the time about celebrities in general. Do you yeah. know what it would take? I mean, look, we got to give credit to the few that do it every once in a while. Yeah, I was watching like, Golden Globes. Like, George Clooney does a lot. Like, right. Like and uh, Russell work. Simmons does a lot. Mm-hmm. And every once in a while, like, Jay-Z will like, help with certain things. And I give those guys a lot of credit. But look, man. If, if they do more, oh. they could change the country because just, they have such... So Justin Bieber had all of his little, like, teeny bops just, like, do one certain thing to help a cause or something. It'd be ridiculous, like... Because he has so He could get all those little girls sway. to fly to, like, Africa or, Donate like, a, a dollar to the Red Cross or to any, whatever charity that anything, we know is good. Anything. anything. I know. And, hey. and they could save the world, like... <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, if Justin Bieber tweeted out or put on his Facebook or some shit, like, all right, guys... Let's all meet in Washington and refuse to work and march until we get universal health care for everybody. Oh, man. <laughs> We'd have it like next Thursday. Yeah, it's so true. And look, this goes for all of them, even ones that have a checkered past like Chris Brown. I've been super tough on him because he beat the shit out of Rihanna and he yeah. probably should have been in jail, right? Yeah. But even like, let's say he came out as a reformed guy and was like, you know what? We're, let's march to eliminate poverty. Yeah. We'd have a bill next week that's like, oh, negative income tax, where yeah. young people, you know, people who don't make a lot of money, the government gives them a subsidy. Yeah. Like, we could fix it. These people, I honestly, I was spoke about this with Ellen the other day too. Ellen did this segment where she responded to an anti-gay oh, I pastor. Saw that. Yeah. It, he, first of all, the clip was gigantic. Like mm-hmm. in two days, I had forty-five thousand views on it. Mm-hmm. And I said in the video, like, I don't know. I know that these guys know they have power. I don't know if they know how much power they really have. Yeah. Because I said, if people like Ellen and other people, if they got even more involved in politics. We could see such a tremendous change in the country. Yeah, and really could. that clip, I think, is perfect evidence of that. My average clip, if you look on the YouTube analytics, like my average clip gets like 8,000 or 9,000 views. That one had 45,000 in two days. So that's proving my point of how powerful she is because people are looking up Ellen DeGeneres. Oh, look what she did. Let me watch this. Yeah. And it's for a good cause, too. I, I was, as you were talking, I was trying to think if like guys who have been caught in prostitution, things like, like Lawrence Taylor, and Greg Anthony and Marv Albert, if they all try to make like a fat massive force and fight against prostitution, but it's got like a negative, you know, like yeah, it's got it still has that it. social taboo to yeah, it. Yeah, so they it takes really a long it. time to get uh, to remove social taboos. It's easier to f- stand up and fight for things like poverty because everybody agrees on some level. Yeah, it's just they disagree on the way to end poverty. Conservatives will say less government, mm-hmm. and liberals will say no more government. Right. Mm-hmm. So it that's something we all agree on. It's just different angles that we're trying to attack it from. Yeah. But something like prostitution, we you know you need some a real strong voice to say no no no. I need you to rethink what you think about it. Because is it really that bad? The answer is no. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Which is, yeah, it's tougher to do. Yeah. All right. So, dude, we've had this conversation go forever. I got so many things I want to get to. My bad. No, no. It's, it's <laughs> cool. I mean, this is the kind of the whole point of what we're doing here. So, what, you, what do I want to start with? I'll give you a rundown of what I wanted to discuss. I jotted down all this stuff. Yeah, so, here. first of all, we just went over through the Greg Anthony thing. I have a story about me going to the eye doctors. It sounds boring, but it's about insurance and how much they fuck everybody over. <laughs> so, I want to talk about that. Also, the worst hazing in fraternities and sororities. Ooh, that one. That's, that's a that's good That's a, a great one. topic. We're definitely going to get to that. And then I have the first time I got high smoking weed and the first time I got insanely drunk off of hard liquor. So those are two great personal yeah, stories. Yeah, I'm ready to start wherever. Okay. Well, let's do uh, let's do the hazing for okay, the fuck cool. of it and get that out of the way here because this is I have also have some. I'm gonna ask you how much money it would take for you to do this shit. Why am I singing? Five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I don't all care right. what it is. Five dollars. I'm good. So first of all, let me state that I don't really know if these are the worst examples of hazing mm-hmm. because I thought as I was reading through the article on this, and there's like a bunch of the same article online. It's all the same. I'm like, I've heard personal stories that are like worse than these. Some yeah. of them, you know, yeah. like some of them are really bad and somebody died, but yeah. other ones are like not really all that bad. Or I-, I know I've heard stories from our friend Henry, and then I asked him one time, and I was like, Yo. Does that shit really happen? He's like, I, I had to break him down hard on this because I guess like once you, 
me personally, I'm uh, I'm I'm against fraternities and sororities. Oh, me too. We'll get to like, that, man. We're, <laughs> I'm gonna we're, fucking what are we, rage. Extroverts? Is that where you're outgoing or in, extroverts? Uh, in, right? Introvert is when yeah you keep to yourself. Yeah. Extroverts so is when I would you're say outgoing. I'm an extrovert where I can go to college or somewhere and, and you'll and make friends, make friends of my own. Yeah. Not necessarily that that's the main reason of a fraternity is to make friends, but, but it's a big part. It's of it. a big part. Yeah. So uh, I, just back to quickly, Henry, I had to break him down, and he said a lot of times. Uh, fraternity brothers will just like amplify their stories yeah. times a million. So you're like, oh, oh that's shit, crazy, man. Bro. You guys fucking sucked each other. You guys up. are bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yo, I had to do it to get in, man. <laughs> you put a catfish in your ass, bro. Like, that's fucking crazy. What is it? A uh, donkey walk or an elephant walk? Or are you like, you just oh, is that one, one of them? them? Yeah, let's go oh, through God. it. So, first of all, this one is really fucked up, man. Uh-huh. Raped by a Sharpie. You take a Sharpie uh, marker. And you rape the guy's ass. One of those jumbo shots. First of all, can we just get out of the way how a lot of the people in fraternities, they claim to be the straightest people, but <laughs> secretly they're super, super, super gay. That's so true. Like, they're repressed and they're like, I got to get my sexual tension out yeah. somehow. Oh, I got a story on that one. Really? Go, go for it. Um, I'm not going to say who or where, but I heard a story that when the kids were pledging, um, turns out the guy, the pledge master... Is now gay, like full blown out, like really gay. <laughs> he was gay then too. He just didn't say it. He, he just changed his say. mind on Thursday. <laughs> so he had the pledges come into his room, um, and he would put on a porn. And he had the pledges no, no sound on it, and no. he'd have them make the sound of no. what was happening. And at the time I asked the person, I was like, Do you not realize that he's getting off there? to this yeah, shit? Yeah, and and be like this is, this is a little strange. Like, this oh is a little, my this God. Is a little First weird. Of all, that like, might be a crime. Like, Or he, he might have crafted it just so it's barely not a crime. Yeah, you but know? everything in fraternities, that's why they're usually getting in trouble and that's being a good underground point. Yeah, because like, all the shit they're doing is That's right. If they do something crimes. that's not a crime, it's like, wow, they're a good... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. So oh, they told so me creepy. that, and I was like, okay, one, you're not doing anything with fraternity with your fraternity brothers to right. build some bonding type of shit. Right. What you're doing is just, like, pleasuring him. Like, there's no gain of that. Because, look, the people, like, they'll manipulate people in the weirdest ways yeah. for sexual reasons. Yeah. So, rape by a Sharpie is one of these. How much would it cost for you to... Seriously. Like, if a real number. I don't if know. Some, if, and, okay, let me set up this scenario for you, and then, then you tell me. Because it would vary by, by the number of people in the room, and if anybody would ever know. Like, we'll these are all Sharpie serious. it was. <laughs> Only a green one, bro. Yeah. That's all I care about. <laughs> so in the room is three people. Your fraternity brothers. Right. That are pledging with you? No. Three of the leaders they're or already whatever. In, but yeah. Okay. They're already in. They're like the leaders. Uh -huh. One of them takes the Sharpie. The the butt end, not the top end with like the weird swivel thing. <laughs> like the, the butt end. You know what I mean? So where it's smoother. Okay. So it's okay. not like going to rip your rectum. Yeah. Right. And they do it five times. <laughs> you guys didn't see, but Kyle just made a motion of, of the how they're like, gonna they, do it. They put it in your ass like this, <laughs> like 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 so. I don't know. It's that's got to be a lot of because I'm against degrading shit. Oh wait, shit. wait. And nobody ever knows. Nobody ever knows, <laughs> except those three guys, <laughs> though. Now the, the price went from yeah, like a hundred thousand dollars higher, hundred thousand uh, dollars less. I mean, I'm a confident dude. I'll take. <sighs> Right, I just went in my head from fifty thousand to twenty five thousand to, to down, seven dollars down to down to maybe like seven hundred dollars. Oh, <laughs> I respect terrible, you man. for being honest. That's what's up. I, I just don't had know. the numbers and I was like thinking of, of, of it would vary. First of yeah, all, for you, let let's let's keep it real that like if if literally nobody would know. Like if nobody would know, we know that. Like it's a fact. But those somehow, three dudes know, and you you'd right. always have in your head that maybe he's gonna tell. Someone. But I'm saying somehow in this hypothetical Twilight Zone universe, you know that it never gets uh, out. That never gets out. Okay. Right. In that case, I would go pretty low too because mm -hmm. I'm a confident dude. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I know I'm secure in my sexuality. Mm -hmm. So if to make a shitload of money really quickly, it's just, hey, let's pump the butt end of the Sharpie in your ass four times, five times. It's like, well. So how much for you? How um, uh, Yeah. So my number, I guess, was 700. I'm going higher than you, um, but not by much. Uh-huh. 701. Go, is this Price is Right? <laughs> oh, fuck. This is actually a harder question. Um... And everybody's I thinking it go, too right now. Everybody's thinking everybody's, of their own everybody, number. And look, if there's oh, no, no, never, there's not a number in the world. Bro. Everyone you're has a fucking so number. So full of shit. Everybody listening right now has a fucking number. Yep. Every single one of you, you're a lion son of a bitch. Yep. If you say, if you pretend you don't have one. Yep. Um, 
Post your I'm gonna numbers. Go, post your numbers. I'm going. It's hard. Eight thousand. Eight thousand. Yeah, eight thousand. That's still, a lie. I feel like I could budge you off that number lower. <laughs> Let's negotiate for the sharpie in yeah. my ass. Eight thousand. Nah, I would like five thousand. I think is. Uh, You're doing it for five thousand. Nah, really? Nah, I think it's got to be. It, I like eight. Eight is even like seven thousand five hundred. When I hear that, I'm like, uh, wow. So that makes me like feel like I got to change my number then. Nah, you. I respect the fuck out of you for keeping it real. For if nobody knew, with and it was just like whatever, and it didn't hurt my. That's like, what I'm saying. Ass. Nobody knows is a big is a big part of it. Yeah. Then. If you and okay, now let's change it a little bit. <laughs> One guy in Montana knew about it. <laughs> <laughs> One person in the room, but there's a good chance the story gets out. First of all, I think one person in the room makes it worse. Because if there's three, it like diffuses the yeah. sexuality of the situation. If there's one dude, like he's probably like, like super that, creepy. Like and, that porn story. Right, yeah. yeah. Oh. oh. I mean. That, I don't, honestly, it'd be hard for me to pick a number for that one. Because the thought that people might know about it is yeah. like. Ah. Yeah. It's a little, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's too hard. People no, I can't even, even answer that That's one. just what they think is that. Yeah, song. I'm not even going to make you answer that, and I don't want to answer that because yeah, I don't know tough. the number. I really don't know the number because yeah, that's too, tough. like, there might not be a number in that situation because yeah. then you're known as that guy no matter what you do. Oh, you're the guy who had the Sharpie in his ass by the <laughs> by the guy when you were pledging. You don't know if you're talking to a girl and she knows about it, like, you know, oh, like, because you're thinking about it. Sharpie now? He's going to yeah. want me to put my finger in his ass yeah. and shit. No, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't have any Sharpies on me. All right, the second thing. The closest staples closes at eight. <laughs> the closest staples closest today. Oh, it was good. All right, the second thing. Worst hazing. This is for sorority specifically. Uh -huh. They did They're cocaine bad. or dildo, where they either either the girl had to pleasure herself with a dildo in front of her entire sorority, or they had to do a line of cocaine. I think that's the easiest one in human history. You go with the cocaine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like they're doing that anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like well, that's why I said. Remember, how I said some of these aren't terrible. Like yeah. that's not terrible because everybody's gonna pick the cocaine and they're gonna have an awesome night. Yeah, be like, old. or they're gonna do the dildo and just have an even awesomer night. <laughs> do the cocaine and then the dildo. Yes, and then <laughs> you can fucking charge money and make a lot of money for that. And then I'll bring all the sharpies and we'll have an awesome <laughs> time. <laughs> all right, the third one. This one I don't even know if it's legal. Boiling hot water. That's thrown on their like backs and chests and shit. Oh. And what they did is they would take hot water and then put cayenne pepper in it and put pepper spray in it, which somehow makes it feel even hotter than it is. Jeez. Yeah. And I don't know if people ended up in the hospital. I don't think this is one of the ones where people died, but I think people got injured doing it. Mm -hmm. How much would it cost for you to do and that? Like, I don't know. They just like throw it. They just put it on you or throw it they on you? They just throw it on you. That's crazy. I don't, I don't know if there is a number for me for that because yeah, I, don't, I don't want that. There's no number for like... Pain. possible permanent scarring and yeah. shit like when you ever take off your shirt in your life and you're with a girl she's like what the f yeah you're like that's some weird scars that's why i respect um it's like popular in like black uh fraternities is when they brand each other oh that's and like that, a tattoo yeah the, permanent scar yeah but it's like i think worse than a ta you i don't have any tattoos you have a couple tattoos so you know the pain of that. Yeah, branding's got to hurt a lot branding's worse. Branding's got to But that also hurt. looks kind of badass, though. No, that's what I'm saying. It yeah. looks I, I like it looks super sick and it's dope. Yeah, I was going to... Man, but that's black, fucking... Black fraternities find a way to do it right. And they do it awesome. All like, the, the dumb uh, white people are like, bro, let me put like a fucking cane up your ass, bro. Yeah, or they hit each other black with the Black people are like, you white people are fucking crazy. Yeah. We're going to get this cool looking tattoo like shit. Yeah. I see NFL players with like uh, with the fraternity branding yeah. of like Omega or whatever their sh shit is. I'm just like, that shit must have hurt like fuck and now it looks super awesome. Yeah. All right. Here's the next one. Yeah, so no money, I think, for that. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. I would. Like, I don't. I wouldn't do that yeah. one because it might permanently scar. Or not, yeah, I yeah. don't know. I wouldn't do it. Uh, the next one is, this is again for the sororities alone. They have boob ranking, where what they'll do is they'll make all the the girls line up, mm -hmm. and then they'll rank them by size of boobs or like how much they like their boobs, and then they would berate the ones that had the like the flatter chests. Oh yeah. That's so so vicious for it girls is. like and girls are super sensitive with Yeah, that shit. they'd be like, "Oh, f like that could really hurt your self-esteem in a big way." This is I really hate sororities and fraternities like with yeah. a passion 
Because like, like it, when you it, hear shit like this, it glorifies every negative aspect of human beings. Mm -hmm. Like it glorifies the tribal nature of humans and this idea that like I want to fit in. Please let me fit in. Uh, okay, but first you got to put a turtle in your ass. Like, yeah. what the <laughs> no? Stop it! Like, what are we doing here? And yeah. the fact that schools like give it the okay. And th that you're allowed to put it on your resume or something. Exactly. That, like, you're an immune. I'm part you know, of this cult. Like, oh, I was Kappa Beta Vega also. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. That's, that's definitely close to this name of a real one. <laughs> Kappa Vita Vega. We just made up fucking Greek or words or whatever. The yeah, fuck. but the fact <laughs> that you're in an important business meeting like for like a full-time job and that you could put on your resume, your fraternity, that you've done... That you sat in a room and made porn sounds to. Yeah. And the guy interviewing you can say, I was in the same thing as you. Like, shouldn't we fucking, in society, shouldn't we, like, encourage the exact opposite of what a frat is? Yeah. Like, shouldn't we encourage people, like, hey, we would really like it if you kind of read a lot of books and learned a lot of shit and, like, you were, were independent. an independent yeah. thinker. Yeah. But instead, they're like, oh, you were in the fucking tribal backwards group that's like a herd of wildebeest <laughs> that fucking fuck people up and shit i was in so it too bro I. let's fucking tank the world economy on wall street together <laughs> yeah that's true it's i fucking hate frats sorry, sorry guys i really do all right, right next one elephant walk <laughs> you you called it by the way there's different variations of it because in the article they went through there's like three different variations of it the elephant walk is one of them is you hold the guy's dick in mm -hmm. front of you and the I guy behind one you one you like put your you insert i didn't i <laughs> see i didn't even read that one there's uh, the ones i read were Hold the guy's dick in front of you, and then the guy behind you holds your dick, and oh. you all walk together, and you go... You <laughs> That's my attempt at an elephant even... noise. It didn't work out too well. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds nothing like an elephant. That sounds like a herd of elephants, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then another way they describe it is you put a finger in oh, okay. the guy's Maybe ass. That's what it was. Yeah, and then the guy behind you puts a finger in your ass. There's no number for me for that. Yeah. I mean, that's just pure humiliation right yeah i don't know what makes the sharpie one better but it is better yeah i can't even describe what makes the sharpie one less demeaning but it is less demeaning yeah i guess so. right isn't yeah. it like eight dudes lined up making fucking it's elephant just... noises with parts of your body and their parts of bodies and yeah, holding dicks strange. and shit it's... and guaranteed the first dude who came up with that was also wanted to see it yeah. you don't come up with that unless you want to see it like there's no under no circumstance if I was a leader in a frat or some shit yeah, would I come yeah. up with some shit like that unless I want to see dudes do that. Yeah, and the only so reason you want to see dudes do that is because you could get off from it. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, you're right. Like if I'm the leader of a fraternity, like my brother was in a fraternity and he is the most outgoing person. Yeah, your brother's way too smart for frats. That's man. why I was like, and I I've asked him. I was like, you know, why did you join a fraternity? He's like, you know, I joined this fraternity because their motto was like it was like built on like fitness and like mm. strength. So like. He was doing stuff that was like he'd be working out with his brothers. So mm -hmm. like their pledging would be like an absurd amount of push ups. Mm, right. They had to like um run through the projects of a really bad area at like twelve at night in all red or in all blue. Oh shit. Like that's shit rough. like that. Yeah. So like and then I think at one point he told me they like tried pouring syrups or shit on him and he like was like, nah, fuck this. Like this isn't why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I'm Joining a brotherhood of like people who are yeah. committed to the same thing nah. as me as fitness and your shit. brother is more of a person who should lead a group yeah and have the group make sense yeah. like have it a, you know like a workout group or some shit like yeah, that so yeah, I saw he's him, too smart the for reason he joined it was because of like the fitness and the physical like fitness right, side of yeah, it but once it, they cross that line i could of, see him being good enough to reform it like yeah. he could reform a frat and make him not insane yeah you know that's I mean? why he he like got everybody to yeah. be like yo this is stupid he's why like are the they pope francis of fraternities he's what? the pope francis of fraternities because you know how the pope took over the catholic church and yeah he made it like super from super crazy conservative to like more open-minded yeah that's your brother like uh -huh. he gets into the frat and it's crazy and backwards he's like whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. let's just do some fucking push-ups here yeah let's not fucking you know yeah yeah no. Keep doing the crazy shit. All right, next one. This one is just fucking abuse. Paddling, where the, you hit somebody's ass repeatedly yeah, with a paddle. Like to me, that's just abuse. Things, yeah. yeah. The next one is oh, water overdosing. Somebody died from this, from water overdosing. I, 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 I feel like I heard about this, but I feel like it was in a competition or something. They were drinking water. That or... happened, yeah. I heard that story, too. There was one that happened at a radio station where they were like doing a challenge to oh, drink really? the most water and somebody died. Uh -huh. But it also happened at a frat where they, they overdosed on water. And like, wow. I forget exactly how they described it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forget how they described it, but like the person totally bloated up in their brain. Something happened with their brain where they just died, which is crazy. Wow. It, you can overdose on water, which I didn't know. Yeah, that's that, that's a little fascinating. 
All right, uh, next one is, again, this is like abuse. It's all you can drink in 90 minutes. Some guy died from that. He blew a .44, <laughs> which is like absurdly over the limit. A he just died four from four. intoxication. Like, how do the idiots who run it not know what alcohol intoxication is? That's like, incredible. do you not realize you can't drink as much as you can in 90 minutes and not die? Like, any person, if you just keep drinking for 90 minutes straight, you're going to die like eight times over. Yeah. Like, that's enough to kill you so many times. Aye. Like, to give anybody this... This power and this control, especially when they're dumbass fucking like young young like kids, young adults, yeah. yeah. Well, it's the like, fact that people are that, like, if if I'm in, if I'm trying to join the fraternity and the guy is just like, "You're gonna drink for ninety minutes straight," I'll just be like, "That's I'm that's I'm gonna physically die. Impossible, like, I yeah. can't do that, buddy. That's physically impossible." But the fact that like someone is just like, "I'm gonna I gotta do it," like mm -hmm. you just, like. It's mind blowing that they have that much control over them. It, it you know what it is? It's it's sub, this idea of submission to authority. I spoke about it on the show the other day. I forgot in the context of what what story it was, but um, mm. it's like the I think it's called the Zimbardo prison experiment, where this psychologist got together groups of uh, uh, two groups of kids that he brought in for an experiment. One was supposed to be the prison guards. Mm -hmm. The other was supposed to be the prison nurse, and he set it up like it was a real prison. And he let them know, all right, you guys are the guards, here are your outfits, you guys are the prisoners, here's your outfits. Within like a day or two days, they totally embodied what they were told to be. So like the guards were super vicious and like really big assholes to them and like abused them and shit. And the prisoners were really meek and passive and like quiet and they really submitted to these guards. And what that shows you is people are amazing at just adopting the role that they're given. So in a fraternity, you have the leader who's like, I'm the leader. I'm going to tell them to do some crazy shit. Yeah. And the person who's pledging is like, I'm the pledgy. I got to be the little bitch here. Yeah. And like when you put people in a hierarchy, you make it so that they really buy into the hierarchy and they're like, okay, this is how it works. That's the boss. I'm the bitch and yada, yada, well, yeah, yada. You see that at bars and stuff with bouncers or That's something. That's right. And it's a huge, it's a huge <clears throat> problem with people because it's like you're, you're supposed to be independent and rational and you're supposed to realize things that are stupid and, and rise above you know, stupid shit like this. Yeah. Like, if we look at the government and they're doing some fucked up shit, you're not supposed to think, well, that's the government, they must be right. You're supposed to go, no, 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 let's fix that, mm -hmm. you know? And they had to end that experiment early because it got so vicious because the guards were so vicious and the prisoners were like, they were just taking it. Wow. So they had to end it because people were going to get hurt. That shows you a lot, man. And it this does. speaks right to the fraternity thing. All right, the next one might be the grossest. You You carry shit like buckets of shit Ugh. for an exercise course and then at the end of it you have to do push-ups in piss-soaked garbage. What the fuck? I know these, again, these are like fucking disease yeah. type things. Like if you have a cut in your like, hand. I'm not doing that. I'm yeah, not, I'm I, not, no doing, that I'm not doing that. No money. I love how the one we said yes to Ugh. was Sharpie in our ass but then the others were like, I would never do that, Because it just started getting like, like these fraternity, they just try and one-up each other with like weirder gay, yeah. like infected like shit. Right, and then the last one, you ready? Swallowing raw liver whole. Uh, somebody died from this one too. I forget how. I don't know if they choked Swallowing. on it or something. But you, they cut up pieces of liver and they uh, soak it in oil and they make you swallow it whole. No <sighs> chewing. It's so Yeah, weird. there's, I mean, I would never want to be part of a group that would make me do any of that yeah. stuff. Like that's not a good group. Yeah. It's just not. That's just not a good group. They don't care about the things I care about, which is justice, equality, <laughs> fairness. Like they're not... They don't give a shit. Like, yeah. they're fine with contributing to the problem and not trying to fix it. Mm -hmm. nah, I'm not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that was fun. That was the 10 worst ones. And again, I think we've heard personal stories, but they're probably, a lot of them Enhanced, are made up or yeah. embellished or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've heard personal stories that are worse, like drinking a ridiculous amount and then running, like, naked through the hood or some shit. Like, yeah. I heard that. Well, I heard um, just, like, for sorority, like girls would be blindfolded and they'd give them some like squishy shit to eat and you'd think you're eating something disgusting but it's really just i don't know something that's squishy that's not that bad that might like, be true yeah yeah yeah. that I mean, one that, sounds like it's but, but then happened. again to that point it's just like you got to trust them that it's not something nasty yeah like what if it what if it was some nasty squishy shit <sighs> yeah i'm against these things yeah. if you can't tell especially Same. i'm definitely against the school giving them credibility which they do well there are All the some schools. good fraternities and sororities um that you know are just like for a good cause and well the the idea a frat house or sorority house the idea of people banding together to like have voluntary like clubs yeah. i'm not against that at all in fact i don't think anybody has the right to tell you you can't do that 
But what I'm against is if there are fraternities with horrific track records, mm -hmm. the school saying to them like they're a legitimate organization. You're in Phi Kappa Fafa Flacca. <laughs> and we, hey, that helps. That goes on your resume. It's like, no, when you give leg <laughs> legitimacy to this organization, which is shown time and time again that it's actually terrible, mm -hmm. like that's a problem. I think that's the big problem. Mm -hmm. All right, now, um, I will now proceed to tell you <clears throat> the story of the first time I got insanely drunk off hard liquor. This is You might have been there, man. Really? You might have been there. I, actually, as I tell the story, you tell me if you came. I'm not sure. Oh, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> not that kind of car. <laughs> um, so, first of all, let me just state for the record, Your Honor, that <laughs> I fucking, I, I hate hard liquor. Same. With a passion. Same. And I know, like, the manly thing is the opposite of that, right? The manly thing is, when we go, oh, like, give me some Jack Daniels, bro. Give me some fucking Jim Bean, bro. Fuck That's what that. I want, bro. It's like, nah, uh, no. Give me a sex on the beach that tastes sweet and good. <laughs> I'll have that. Yeah, too. I mean, it's a well-known fact that, like, the the fruity so-called girly drinks are delicious. Yeah. I mean, they're made to taste like high C. Yeah. And everybody likes high C. Yeah. So, yeah. They, so people who, who lie about that, they're liars. Like, unless you're, like, a... A 65 year old man or older and you look grizzled and yeah. you look like you fucking fought in Vietnam and shit then it's like okay you yeah Jack Daniels is for you or like old grandpa you remember that shit there was that whiskey on my birthday that like, oh they yeah found it, it that, wasn't like, old the, grandpa it was something else it was like yeah, it was like old, it was like something grandfather's yeah. weird shit. <laughs> yeah, it had some name like yeah, don't drink like, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brown don't drink this sauce juice. <laughs> All so, right, my bad. We sidetracked on your story. So I hate I just hate I hate hard liquor. Mm -hmm. But when I was young, I didn't really know that I hated it because I never really had it. Mm -hmm. I never had it in a serious way. So at the time, I forget how old we were. It was my first time seriously drinking heavy with hard liquors, probably like 10th grade or some shit like that, mm -hmm. right? Now I I had you know had drinks before, but they, it was beer, and it was like wine a little bit, Some like champagne, champagne and shit like that, which I thought was okay, mm -hmm. which I liked. So it was New Year's Eve, and I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna have hard liquor tonight. Mm -hmm. We went to uh, Andrew Cohen's house. It was me, Henry, and a bunch of other people. Mm -hmm. Stop me if you think you were there. You might have been there. Or maybe not. I really don't remember. Maybe. I, I don't know Henry was one of the ones who was definitely there. I couldn't tell you what I did yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I can't either, but I can tell you what, what this night was oh, like, yeah. which tells you a lot about it. <laughs> so we show up there, and dude, I start, like, I fucking turn into Van Wilder, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, I'm looking around. Everybody's got all this different hard liquor, and it just looked appealing to me that night. That's why I tried it, because there were so many different kinds, mm -hmm. and it was like, oh, this looks cool. Like, yeah. I want to try all these different ones. This is such a good advertisement for for moderation, by the way, this entire story. Because, <laughs> I, you know, I was a fucking moron, right? So I, I'm like, all right, let me just start. I see people taking shots. I'm like, let me have a shot of that. Let me have a shot of that. Let me have a shot of that. Mind you, the entire time, I'm not, like, I don't like it. Like, yeah. I'm just doing it, you yeah, know? Yeah. Like, it burns. I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure I really like this. It's all in a short it. span, right? So oh, in such a yet. short span of time. Oh, that's Dude, the worst. I take 11 shots in like a 30 minute time span. Terrible. And this is how fucking stupid I am. Like, I j was just uneducated about it, yeah. which is a danger for kids drinking, which is why you need moderation and you need education. Uh -huh. You need t to teach kids shit, and they weren't teaching us shit, yeah. right? Yeah, there's chilling. And I was just an idiot. Masturbation or something, but not liquor. They didn't really I figured that out at a young age. <laughs> <laughs> but um so I don't feel I don't feel I don't feel, and that's why I kept taking more and more shots. Mm -hmm. Son. Smacked you. I started uh, we uh, Henry says, Hey, we're gonna go to this other uh, this other place, right? Kid named Richie's house. Mm -hmm. Last name starts with an M. I won't say it on yeah. there, even though I said Andrew's name. Sorry, Andrew. But there's a lot of Andrew Cohen's that probably nobody knows who the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> um so we go to, uh, get, we get in the car. Mm -hmm. First of all, when we leave the house, right, we go out the back door, we walk around the front. That's when it hit me. Like, as soon as I opened the door to walk outside, it was like a fucking ton of bricks. Like Muhammad Ali or that dude who fought last night just punched you Deontay the Wilder, face. by the way, props to the champ, son. <laughs> that, that fight was awesome, and he's, he's a beast. So, uh, we, so we start walking to the car. I swear to you, I made a fucking figure eight in the straight line to the car. I was like, uh, falling all over the place and shit. And I love how 
nobody noticed. Like, really? No, like that's how, that's so such a high school thing to happen. Like, you, somebody's fucking beyond hammered, and everybody just acts like, no, he's good. Oh, I guess he's beyond hammered. Right? Yeah. It's fine. It doesn't matter. It's natural. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm fucking falling over the place. I sit in, sit in the back of the car. We're driving, dude. I'm so fucked up. Right. Oh, the worst feeling. It, worst feeling. So we get to this kid's house, and we're just standing in front, relaxing. At the time, I was smoking because I thought I was cool. And smoking a cigarette, bunch of people around me and stuff. And they're having a conversation. I couldn't tell you what it's about because I'm so beyond hammered, right? I remember this, even though I was super hammered. But then other people, of course, will remember it. And they'll tell you in more vivid detail than I could, right? But I look at them and they say, you looked stone sober. Like, you looked crazy sober. Mm -hmm. Like, just normal day Kyle, right? Mm -hmm. I look at them and I say this. Yo... I'm about to throw up. <laughs> and they're like, all right, well, if you give it, go to the bushes right there, man. Like, they're pointing to something like 20 feet away. It's uh-huh. right there, right? And I go, nah, I'm good. <laughs> and then I go, <laughs> projectile vomits on uh-huh. right in the middle of the street. Uh-huh. Just, <laughs> it looked like the fucking exorcist. Like, like powerful yeah. stream of vomit right yeah. in the middle of the street. And I'm like, yo, Richie, I'm sorry. Because they're like right in front of his house. Yeah. I feel horrible. I'm like, his mom's going to see it. Man, nice Richie, house. what were you doing outside? I see the vomit in the street, Richie. Is that my pasta from last <laughs> night? <laughs> Looks like my so, pasta. The story gets better. So... Uh, we get uh, we get in the car, and they're, they're going to go somewhere else. I tell them, I'm like, you guys got to drop me off at home, man. Yeah. By the way, you want to see how much of a fail this was? What? The time was like 10.45, 11, 10 or some yeah. shit before midnight yeah. on New Year's Eve. So I just, I, fuck, I was such a bitched out move, right? Like, I look like a punk bitch, uh-huh. right? So uh, they drive me back to my house. When I go to get into my house, it it was like a scene from a, from a movie or some shit because everybody's like, yo, man, like, let me help you to the door or whatever. I'm like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I open the, I open the car door. I start walking. Uh-huh. I'm like, keep it together, keep it together. As they're pulling away, like they pull away, I like collapse and start like crawling to the door. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I open the door. Right uh-huh. now, thankfully, nobody was home. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, everybody was out like celebrating in my family and shit. So I open the door. By the took me like an hour to fucking get my yeah. kid in. I'm like hitting this. I'm like, oh, okay, this is never gonna happen. And I probably considered giving up at one point. Like, oh, I'll like just sleep. Yeah. I'll just sit down out here or some shit. No. So I get in somehow. Mm-hmm. Literally crawl upstairs. Crawl up my stairs. Mm-hmm. The entire time thinking to myself, I'm gonna you're die. fucking crawling right now. Oh. Are, you, are you crawling right now? What? Wow, you're crawling right now. Uh-huh. So I I get in my bed. First of all, I drag my. Uh, my garbage pail next to me if I have to keep throwing up the rest of the night. Yeah. Um, And I have no recollection of throwing up the rest of the night, but in the morning I look over, there's vomit in the thing. Yeah, of course. The the best part of the story. You ready for this? Again, this is like out of a fucking movie. Mm -hmm. Like super bad or some shit. (laughs) So now, in order to tell you the rest of the story, I have to rewind to like a week or two weeks earlier. (laughs) I was uh, uh, very good friends with... uh, is this kid Jose? Mm-hmm. You remember Jose? Yeah, of course. Nice guy, great guy. Me and him were uh, super close. Uh-huh. And Jose, uh, women really liked Jose. They loved him. And he had introduced me to this girl who was friends with the girl that he was seeing, and kind of kicked off a little bit. And we exchanged numbers, and we hung out a few times. Now nothing happened yet at that point. But something could have, like, so it was developing, right? We could have, you know, had a nice little high school fling thing going on, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm laying in bed, beyond hammered, drunkest I've ever been in my life. And he calls me. I'm like, what the fuck? I answer. I don't know why I answer. I usually wouldn't answer in that situation, but I answered. And he says, yo, you remember that girl you met the other night? And I'm like, yeah. And mind you, she... From what I remember, she was super hot, right? Mm-hmm. He's like, yo, she wants to fuck you. I'm like, really? <laughs> He's like, right now. <laughs> I'm like, 
No. <laughs> <laughs> on the phone, son. Said no? I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I was fucking oh. beyond hammer laying in my own filth. And oh. Just, oh, my. It was like that entire night was like a movie, man. It was like a movie. That probably turned you into a rock star, like, in her eyes. Like, yo, like, what? He just rejected me like that? Well, yeah, maybe. I don't know. You but know? Because I don't, he didn't, I, he didn't know the story. I couldn't tell the story, so he probably thought I was doing something else. But I was fucking hammered and yeah, I know. But so you weren't there this night then. I thought you might have been there in the car the entire time. No, I don't think so. Man, I mean, I I could have been. I just don't. I don't fucking remember. Yeah, no, I think you would have remembered me throwing up. You would have remembered that, like my projectile vomiting in front yeah. of Richie's house. The only projectile environment I remember is from my love you man. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> thought you were gonna say one from me, a different one no. from me. I don't throw up often, so yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that sounds terrible. Yeah, that's a good story though, right? It's one yeah, of my, that's good. I was thinking about the other night. Do you remember night. any? Is it any? Spe- was it any specific liquor that you look at now and you're still like all of them? Oh, the right. only one that I could tolerate, and when I say tolerate, I mean tolerate. Uh-huh. Like I could take a little bit, but I still can't have a lot of it. Vodka. It's those damn Russians. They they slip yeah. through somehow. But all the other ones, I don't like tequila. I don't like rum. Oh. I don't like whiskey. I like none of that shit. Yeah. It's no, it's no, really, especially brown, uh, like brown liquor is the yeah, worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I could have like maybe a little bit Jack of vodka. Daniels and when I say, like that. right. And when I say vodka, I could have vodka. I mean, like I could have a little bit of vodka, but you got to water it down. Yeah, shit. some yeah. Sprite, some Coke, so anything, 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 anything to mask the taste. Like I had a bad night with Fireball and like I can't even look at a Fireball bottle yeah, anymore. Like that's the right. The fucking Pitbull song comes on and I start re-throwing up. I again. hear you, man. I'm, it's not my thing, but I actually. It's crazy how like your it works out works better. Like it works out better for us though, because you know. I'm happy with the Corona. That's I'm what I'm saying. With, like, I'll, that's my me, beer of choice. Yeah. It's like 20 Coronas. I'll be good. <laughs> yeah. And, but I think it prevented us from... Because we drink a decent amount. So that would have been if we were fucking drinking hard liquor all this time. Like yeah. that, That's worse for you, I think. What? If you drink a lot of hard liquor. Yeah. 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 Probably, yeah. All right. So uh, now, do you have any... Do you want to tell any uh, uh, drinking stories in particular? Or you uh, want me to move yeah. on to... Okay. So yeah. let me move on to... <laughs> The first time I got high smoking weed. Admittedly, I don't think this story is as good as the last one. The mm-hmm. last one was like just one of my all-time <laughs> classics. So this one, I've told this on air before, but I don't know if it made it on YouTube. So mm-hmm. most people probably didn't hear this story. The first time I actually got high smoking weed, right? So I had had up, this is in high school. Up to this point, I, I had already um, smoked weed like three or four times. Mm-hmm. You know the old, like people say, oh, you don't get high the first however many times you smoke weed. Yeah. Or once, usually they say once or twice. It was like th- three or four times for me. And look, some people is different. Some people, the very first time they smoke, they get high. Mm-hmm. But the, to the idea that, oh, it's a myth that like, oh, no, you everybody gets high the first time they smoke. That's not true. Mm-hmm. And I'm living evidence of it. Okay. I know I went through it. That's just not true. Mm-hmm. So I'm the idiot who just grew to believe that, well, I guess this just doesn't get me high. <laughs> right? Well, let's do more. So... Here's what happened. I was invited by, I forget who it was I, uh, at the time. It was like, you know how I hung out with uh, those older kids too, like uh, Donnie and yeah, 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 yeah. and all them. Uh, it was one of, it was him and like some other people. It might have been Mar- Marty Weiler, mm-hmm. who was such a wild fuck. Who, mm-hmm. He was so like enjoyable to be around because he's just fucking crazy. I yeah, love that guy. Off the walls. Yeah. Great guy. Um, so it was him or it was somebody else. They were like, yo, you want to come smoke? I forget what this was, 10th or 11th grade or some mm-hmm. shit. And it was during school. And I was, you know, us, man. Like, I cut plenty. I yeah. mean, we went to... It was the most liberal school ever, you know? Like, Nourish Hill High School. They mm-hmm. don't really give a fuck. Like, no. they give a fuck. And, like, they have good teachers. Yeah. But, like, it's up to you to go to class and shit, you yeah. know? I managed to get, like, a 83 average or so, even though I didn't really do any work. <laughs> but, um... So, I said yes. It was in the middle of the school day. Cut, like, a few classes to do it. We go out, like, into the woods near the high school or some shit and smoke. And then I go back. I'm like, do I want to go to... I think the per- the people I were with are like, we're not going to go to class the rest of the day or whatever. They left, did some shit. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back to class. So walk back in the school. Here's when it hit me. When I opened the door. Remember the second floor art wing? Yeah. I opened the door to the second floor art wing on the side of, uh, like, closer to the, where the lunch room is. You know what I mean? Like, not on the side... Like, where there is an entrance. Um, you, you might not have used this entrance, so I don't know. Maybe, I don't we know. had a gigantic high school, by the yeah, way, for everybody listening. It was like huge. fucking like 6,000 people or some shit yeah. went there. So anyway, I entered uh, into the second floor art wing, which was the area where all the cool kids were, <laughs> admittedly. <laughs> <laughs> so I opened it, and I'm walking, and I'm like, as I'm walking, I'm like, 
this feels different. <laughs> like I had that feeling of like I've I've been Slow here, motion. but I haven't yeah. been here. And like this feels different. I never felt like this before. Yeah. And I'm walking. I'm looking around. I'm like, oh, I'm fucking high as fuck. And I'm like, God, I gotta go to class right now. That's crazy. I can't do this. So, I go to. I I, I did go to class, mm-hmm. but I sat there like this the entire time. Yeah. Like terrified and this might be why to this day a lot of the times i smoke weed i get paranoid uh-huh. terrified that everybody knew i was high yeah that's i was convinced feeling. that even people who didn't even look at me for a second they knew telepathically mm-hmm. like oh kyle's high like when the second i walked in the room i thought they knew like oh this dude's fucking baked out of his skull yeah and from then uh that was the first time i got high it was in school so it was a terrifying experience <laughs> and then from then on there were it was a mix i've told this uh, on air before but like Probably a majority of the times I smoked, I got paranoid. But there were a few times that I just had a fucking grand old time. One of them, I'm convinced you were there. Did you, you, uh, I know both of us never smoked weed a lot, but you smoked it with me, right? Maybe. In at my house. Possibly. I think. I think so. <laughs> I think you were here for the, for. Uh, you were there for. Um, there was one time like a bunch of us smoked it. Like it was all like my friends. It was almost like a fucking. I remember again, a lot a movie of our friends smoked shit. all the time. TP. But we smoked and then we went. Uh, true, but he wasn't there. For this. Oh, okay. But we we smoked and then we sat in my basement and we literally just laughed nonstop. Like the hey, the and you night, had all the snacks in your basement. Ate too, everything so in ate sight. Everything in sight. And like we laughed so hard and then we'd stop laughing and somebody would go, "Yo, why were we laughing?" And then we just laugh again because yeah. nobody knew. It one was of those, one of those. Like that was the best laughs. time. Yes, that was the best time I ever had when I was high. Was that time, which yeah. was much later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, first time I was high, I was in school, and it was the most that's, terrifying yeah, fucking thing. Got to be scary as shit. Yeah, yeah. You think you're gonna get like like you don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, and it was never because then you try and pay more attention, like then. Oh, I was trying all types of shit. Yeah, yeah. So like you're like I have to focus, make my face look like I'm thinking. Yeah, like, like and then and that like, makes me look dumber yeah, and, and then you're higher. Like, what the fuck, like. Yeah, yeah. It was probably and I remember distinctly the feeling of being burnt, like burnt out mm-hmm. afterwards, where like everything was just like numb on me or like tingly or some shit. I I don't know. Weed was never my my first drug of choice for sure. Uh, I'm much more uh, of a. Uh, everybody knows I'd rather take a <laughs> pharmaceutical pill or some shit and then just relax. Um. All right, how much more time we got here? We've been going for an hour. We'll, we'll oh, squeeze really? in. Yeah, it feels less or more. Yeah, less. So we'll squeeze in one or two more here real quick. And then uh, we'll call it a day skis. Um, oh, I got to tell you the story about my uh, my eye doctor situation. Yeah, I'm here. So I went to the eye doctor yesterday, and for for like a couple different reasons. Number one, I kind of have like a little bit of uh, had a little bit of pink eye in my right eye, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure if it was pink eye or whatever. And then also, I need a new prescription for my glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been wearing my glasses a lot more, as everybody sees when they watch. Uh, the show uh-huh. on YouTube, and I have like all I have like ninety seven different pairs of glasses, but uh, I'm, I think I'm have, I'm getting new frames or some shit. But um, so I show up there, and I already know that my situation with my insurance is like weird because in, insurance in America is just fucked up, no matter yeah. what fucking insurance you have. And I knew that my insurance wouldn't cover it, but I show up there, and they're like, "Oh, you like let me see your insurance card." I'm like, oh, okay, it's just, I guess it's just put it on file or something. Because I told them I'm going to pay cash, like, right up front. And so they're look, looking it up on the computer, and the guy's like, oh, there's this a problem. Do you have a different one? I'm like, I give him my old one, and I explain this is the old one, this is the new one. I had to change plans. I get a different subsidy now through Obamacare. Last year I got more. This year I don't get as much, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, okay, no problem. Let me just work this out. And then he calls me up again, like, five minutes later. He's like, oh, we, just, we don't take this insurance. <laughs> and I'm like... Okay, I, I told you I was paying cash, number yeah. one, so it, that doesn't matter. But number two, okay, I mean, it happens so often in America that I don't even bat an eyelash anymore. Like, from all the stories I read. But people just getting rejected? Yeah, like, every, everywhere rejects everybody's fucking health insurance. Like, like, if I go on a vacation and I get hurt, I'm fucked. Yeah. Because none of the places, the hospitals that would be in places I go on vacation accept the kind of insurance I have. And that's one of the main, you know, this is a huge reason why it's totally fucked up. It's like terrible. the insurance in the United States of America is beyond stupid. Then they go, and this is the point of the story that I find interesting. They go, 
uh, oh yeah, I mean, and I told the guy I don't have vision for my for my insurance anyway. And he's like, oh, that's okay. We don't take vision. At the eye doctor, I'm like, yeah, that was the obvious response. But I was so stunned I couldn't even formulate the words. I was like, really? Yeah. He's like, yeah, no, we don't take vision. Like, I don't, I don't even know how to respond to that. What does yeah. that even mean? Yeah. Right. And then. That was it. I was like, okay. So I ended up paying cash, leaving. And then as I'm leaving, I'm thinking to myself, so let me get this straight. They don't take my insurance. They probably don't take a lot of people's insurance because it's not like I did some crazy, you know, yeah, got some crazy thing that nobody knows about. And they don't take vision at the eye doctor. Our entire healthcare system is it's just all a fraud. The entire insurance system, the entire care system. That makes absolutely no, like, it makes absolutely no sense at all. Yeah. And then imagine, it, imagine... A situation where you go to a hospital that's nearby uh -huh. to you and you just happen to have insurance that doesn't cover that particular hospital. We covered a story about this on the show where some woman, she passed out and was brought to a hospital that was like five minutes away, but there was a hospital that's like three minutes away from her, but they went to the one that was five minutes away. And then she woke up, she has a bill for like a, a couple hundred thousand dollars. And the, the three minutes away hospital was in her network. Oh, she would have owed zero dollars and zero cents. God. The five minutes away one was out of her network. Like people from other modern countries look at us and they're like, hey, you guys are just stupid. Like, yeah. what are you doing? How are you not all picketing in the street at this shit? That makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, the whole system is fucking corrupt and stupid but it, it annoys me because we're never going to do anything to change it yeah, like nothing will happen because the people the, pro the problem is that like we're all so used to it that we don't think twice about it we're all just like well i guess that's just how it is i guess it's my problem that this is out of network mm -hmm. but is it is it really or is it the fact that the entire system is just so broken and put together with fucking band-aids and chewing gum and it's just this whole giant massive fucked up thing yeah and then at the top of the system of course there's ceos who are getting rich for sitting on their ass and doing nothing or whereas hip replacements or something don't they just charge an astronomical amount of money for everything they for charge everything money for that, like really cost nothing yeah i mean we uh, that's another story like we did on the show where they put like this profit margin that's r absurd like they'll give you tissues at a hospital and then They'll bill you as cough suppressant aid and charge you like 300 bucks for the little box of tissues. Yeah, believe it. It's like, oh, so this is all just a scam. Yeah. Yeah, so that's my story. Oh, my God. And, um, yeah, that's it. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. All right, guys. Uh, love you to death. We'll see you next week, and I will see you back here tomorrow. Kisses, smooches, peace.